Hey guys, and welcome back for another episode of the Butterfly Effect podcast. I'm Jack, and I'm here with Liam. Hello. And today is another theory video, and this comes off the back of the Bizarre Yet Bonafide podcast. Thank God I said that right. Episode two. And it's really in this episode they go on about the Knicks. Now I've never heard of the Knicks before so I thought a little bit of Google digging was essential here and actually there's a lot of details here that you guys might find interesting so I'm going to list these off to you and then I'll give my thoughts and then I'll come to you mate on any sort of things you want to add as well. So, the Knicks, as I've said before, they are an aquatic humanoid. Um, they are also shapeshifters, and they're known to shapeshift into other humans, uh, horses, other animals in general, mer people, and fish. They tend to lure their victims to water in order to drown them. And they do this by music. So they are music lovers, which I think is an interesting note to add. Um, they are usually presented as wise teachers or romantic figures. And when they are in human form, you can usually tell whether it's a Nyx or not because they've got wet clothing. They also have a gift of prophecy which again, I'll come back to shortly. And typical um, appearances of these creatures in human form, um, they can be like a fair maiden or an old woman, or they can be invisible. However, what I must say, guys, is that take all this with a pinch of salt because there's many different interpretations of the Nyx. Like this one is typically Germanic, there's also a Scandinavian version, there's an English version, so there's lots of different characteristics for these magical creatures. Um, and in terms of how to defeat the Nyx, it's usually by using silver or iron. So to start off with that, I find that you're in a quarry. So if a quarry is there, perhaps there is some silver and iron laying around maybe that could be used for the end game i think the more important thing here is to do with the very glaring fact that it's an old woman who could be prophetic um and that points to eliza our narrator for the game so is it possible that she is a nix and to add to this as well in the episode of the podcast it's said that that the Nyx typically comes around, I think it's during a midnight summer or something like that. And I think this was in the trailer. My memory might be deceiving me or I might have seen a spoiler. I don't know. I swear that there's a still of Eliza in the woods. Um, so potentially that is her on a midsummer's night in the woods, maybe looking for a, a victim. To go against that though, we also have the detail about the music lovers. Now, if you look at the bios for Ryan and Dylan, there's a heavy emphasis on their love of music. So could there be a massive twist and that one of the characters we're playing as is a Nyx? They've shapeshifted into a human. Or is it that maybe they could be an early victim in the game that they that the Nyx uses their love of music against them and perhaps lures them to the water. So that's all I've got for you um, this time around. So I'll now throw it over to you, Liam. So initial thoughts, um, what have you got to say to that? Very interesting, especially about Eliza being a Nyx. And... We've always said that Eliza is kind of that tricky character for us because it seems like you've got these teens at the summer camp, these counsellors, and it seems like you have these hillbillies in the woods. Um, Eliza is kind of that entity where we don't really know what she's going to bring to the table. We know she's kind of psychic. She's possibly linked to these tarot cards. 
But yeah, that could be a really interesting layer if she was a Nyx. Um, so to back your points up about kind of like the lore of the Nyx, if you will, we um, I'm going to bring up some of the comments we had uh, in previous videos of ours. So we've got Anna X Eric Forever who says, for those curious about Nyxes or Nyxes, Nyx in singular, they are similar to Slavic Rosalka in that they lure unsuspecting mortals of bodies into water to drown them. I am not sure if this is for vengeance, food or entertainment purposes, but they are usually found in lakes, rivers, ponds and other sizable bodies of water in Central Europe. Swamp hags exist in England and Scotland, so why not have aquatic bogeymen haunting the waters of the hundreds of lakes in upstate New York? Uh, which is obviously where this game's going to be set. So yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, backs everything Jack says up. So yeah, thank you very much for commenting that one. And, um, you know, it's the kind of thing as well I wanted to bring up as well, where if you look at Until Dawn, there's more than one threat in this game so at the start it threatens that there's all these different things going on from the supernatural to some weird stranger with a flamethrower you've got the obvious wendigos as well as this mass psycho running around and you're very confused as to what's going on it almost seems that the trailers and all the hints we've had so far are very much shoving us towards wolves uh we've had this podcast that um you know does push this possible aquatic creature on and we have seen in the trailer that water will be a theme in this game, whether it's Emma swimming for a late night skinny dip, possibly with Jacob. Uh, yeah, so, you know, this could uh, very much be a theme. It also makes me question uh, the alignment and the motive of the hillbillies. Are they simply just innocent hillbillies uh, wanting to protect teens from a land where they know something haunted goes on, at, you know, a midsummer's night here, perhaps? We see a wolf jump down and Bobby's very much scared here as if he doesn't suspect it. Could it be very much like they're going for the House of Ashes angle where it's the enemy of my enemy is my friend and maybe the teens and the hillbillies end up uniting possibly? Yeah. Um, it would be interesting as well if, um, you know, the uh, Nicks and the Wolves uh, had a fight maybe. I'm thinking we could get, a, you know, a total... Godzilla versus King Kong situation here, Jack, where we could have two possible non-human entities fighting each other. Uh, so if you look at our Bizarre Yet Bonafide 2 video we did, uh, we have a comment from Nikolai, uh, which side note, by the way, massive thank you to Nikolai. He's a recurring fan who comments every video. Uh, his support means so much to us. So yeah, we just wanted to extend a quick thank you for yourself, Nikolai. Uh, he left one comment here that says, My theory at the moment is that at some point in the game, you'll have to somehow kill a werewolf slash monster. So in order to do so, you'll have to lure it out to the lake and pray to God it uh, takes it and not you. I have no evidence, but that would honestly be kind of cool to see. So yeah, Nikolai backs this up and, you know, it could be that we have monster versus monster and maybe we have to orchestrate how this happens. Uh, maybe a lot of the characters' deaths can be from being caught in the crossfire. Uh, because very much in the Until Dawn, we had all these threats, but none of them faced each other. They always haunted the teens. What if we could get these different threats and entities to fight each other? I just think that'd be really interesting. Uh, and a bit of a weird comment, uh, but it's one I want to include. Uh, in our pre-prologue release uh, video, we had John Donovan here who commented, I'm starting to think that the monster isn't a werewolf, but actually feral people, in brackets, mutants, born from radiation and toxic trash, just like the mutants from the Hills Have Eyes and the Wrong Turn 2. Now, that would be completely unexpected, and I don't even know how I'd feel about that. Uh, I mean, what would your opinion be, uh, Jack, if that randomly came out on your first playthrough there? It wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. I think it's a good point because you know what i've noticed i mean obviously the, there's an exception with until dawn because the wendigo is sort of supernatural being and you have the whole native american the cannibalism the miners it seems that in games since then they really do like to try and put a realistic spin on the reason why the villain is so even in house of ashes it's not actually the bat creatures that are the villain it's the parasite that was in them. Um, obviously, with little hope, it was all in his head. The creatures weren't real. Same with Man and Madan. 
it was all in their head it was the gas that they were breathing in so this is this has become part of their formula now so i think it's a perfectly valid point oh very interesting but yeah like um this honestly we have so little to go off of and there's so many different paths this game could go i think everyone's sort of in agreement that it's not just werewolves um a lot of us think this Nyx could be involved as well. We know we have the hillbillies, the supernatural threat. Could it be that we have feral people as well? And you also mentioned shapeshifters there, Jack. There's just so many possibilities that could happen. So yeah, let us know in the comments what you think. If you think that maybe Eliza's a Nyx, do you reckon that the wolves are going to fight this Nyx? Do you reckon there's not even a Nyx and we're being thrown an absolute red heron here? Or do you reckon you're a bus driver and you hit your head? <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm going to end every video with this. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, um but thank you um I, I, any points to add there Jack? Um one final thing, I'm pretty sure I did touch on it a second ago, but Nixies can also be seen as romantic figures. Now, again in characters bios, there is a couple of things about characters wanting romance while they're on the trip. I think maybe Jacob, I think Abigail um, I think Dylan as well being terrified of rejection so again it's another avenue that this creature can manipulate the play manipulate the characters that we're playing as um, so yeah again you know it's it's probably going to be really important in this game to be forensic in this world and to pick up clues because undoubtedly if if it is a Nyx then there's going to be a lot of folklore and a lot of stuff for you to take in so that you can anticipate the right to make the right decision at the right time. And also as well, the fact that the Nyx is a shapeshifter, does that necessarily mean that there is a werewolf as well? It could be that the Nyx is the werewolf and it's the wolf is just one of the many shapes that it can shift into as well as being a human and as well as being you know, a fish-based, um, an aquatic creature. So, honestly, the more we do these videos and the more I start to put theories together, there's usually another wave of information that starts to eliminate other ideas and bring in new ones. So, it's a, it's a nice little process to be going through at the minute, I think. Definitely the case. And if it is shapeshifters, I'm not going to lie, but these past few um, super massive games we've had, we've very much been rewarded for helping and trusting people. But if it's shapeshifters, it's going to be the opposite. You're really going to struggle to trust anyone around you. I'm thinking here, like, I could just be having a nice bit of dialogue with someone. And in the back of my mind, I'm going to be thinking, like, are you a shapeshifter? And it's going to probably throw off my gameplay and it's probably going to lead me to making some stupid decisions that I'm going to regret in hindsight. But that is the beauty of these games on your blind playthrough. So I'm really going to relish it and make the most of it. That's it. Like, can you imagine a situation where like Jacob, we know that Jacob is like chasing after Emma. Do you imagine if like maybe Emma gets killed or something and then whatever it is shapeshifts and so it looks like Emma? Then you could be talking to Emma and you're thinking, wait, is this the real Emma? Like, you'll just be sat there paranoid for like 10 hours. <laughs> That's it. Like, imagine with Until Dawn when Jess supposedly gets killed. Imagine if when she did her epic comeback, that it's not even her. It could be one of those kind of things where we get caught up in the glorification or the happiness that one of our favourite characters has come back but maybe they're dead and it's not who you think they are. Like, that could just throw a so, really interesting, you know, yeah. almost like emotional angle there that I'd really like to see, actually. Yeah, absolutely. But no, other than that, mate, nothing nothing to add. No, that's brilliant. I mean, that's just us spitballing ideas. Uh, we're really intrigued by theories. We're constantly going to be doing these videos. So honestly, throw your comments to us. It might be that we feature you because um, yeah, we'd love to see what you guys think. And it'll be really interesting to revisit what we've just said because you know it might be that we're completely way off. But yeah, thank you very much for joining as always, guys. Uh, yeah, this has been the Butterfly Effect podcast. Links are in the description. Check out our other quarry content in the playlist. And yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you for joining. Ciao.